fansupermart.com Hi Gav, what are your views on volatility for global markets in the year 2015? Given the divergence of monetary policy in developed markets, is this expected to have a significant impact on volatility? Well, volatility is going up. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, in fact, I think we've gotten used to the last three years of abnormally low levels of volatility. But what with the likely interest rate normalization in the US, coupled with probably negative interest rates in Europe, we're going to see much more divergence, uh, more of a roller coaster ride. We've obviously already seen that in commodity markets, high yield market, and obviously the currency market uh, more recently. But we think that'll feed through to equity markets as well. Um, obviously, one thing to bear in mind is that although higher volatility means you know, risk management is going to be uh, more important, it can also mean that there are more opportunities. Um, so we think having a flexible approach to be able to uh, invest in things which overshoot, uh, which become too cheap, or stay away from things which become too expensive uh, will remain crucial to managing portfolios. Given this outlook, can you briefly explain the fund's current allocation to equities and fixed income? Certainly. Um, equities remain our preferred uh, asset class. Um, and despite higher and higher valuations, we still think the economic cycle uh, is favorable to equities. So we've maintained about a 40% uh, physical exposure. We are quite active in, in managing that exposure, and we can use hedging instruments to reduce it when we're nervous, but generally around 40% physical equities. Then on the fixed income side, um, we have uh, a blend of, of high yield, uh, investment grade, and emerging markets. On the high yield side there, we became quite nervous in the middle of last year of the high yield bond market, uh, spreads becoming quite tight, and at the same time, a lot of um, investor money flow chasing the market, if you like, flowing into those funds. And we thought that any slowdown in, in money flowing into the funds might lead to a quite a sharp correction, uh, which is what we then saw in middle of last year and again more recently. Uh, so in high yield at the moment, um, we've cut below 20%. Uh, we used to have in 2013, we had more than 30% in high yield, below 20% uh, in that part of fixed income. And then in, in, term, in terms of investment grade and emerging market debt, um, investment grade, we prefer longer dated maturities. We actually think the long end of the interest rate um, curve or the yield curve might be quite well supported. And then in emerging markets, probably staying away from some of the more um, dubious sovereign uh, debt, preferring high quality corporate names um, issuing in hard currency in, the EM, in emerging markets. The Stroder Global Multi-Asset Income Fund adapts this strategy by allocating assets in low volatility assets that provide income such as government bonds and high dividend stocks. What factors do you consider when choosing an investment for income? And are there any unique methods which the fund utilise to generate income and reduce volatility in its holdings? Hmm. I mean, we do think taking an active approach to the stock selection is important. Uh, and the reason for that is that if you just have a very simple way of looking for yield, let's say you just look at a dividend yield, what might have happened is a share price has fallen, so the dividend yield on a historic basis looks high, but actually that company is going to cut its dividend. So we think that having an active team to identify where is there a sustainable income, so we look for sustainable dividends, sustainable coupons. Obviously, part of sustainability is quality. So the second thing we look at is the quality um, of a company. You know, how strong is it? Can it survive a downturn in future? And then obviously, the last thing we look at is price. Um, we don't want to overpay for, for um, any security. So I think by doing focusing on sustainability, quality, and then obviously price, you know, that'll be the way we can continue to deliver for our clients. The way we, in, you know, in terms of our differentiators, I would say our focus on risk management and, and trying to produce a stable NAV as well as sustainable income uh, is one of the things we, we pride ourselves in. And there we can use um, hedges on different parts of the market. In equities, we can, let's say, buy options or sell futures. We can hedge interest rates, credit, 
And we're also very active in managing the currency risk in our portfolios. Now, obviously, when you're putting in a hedge, there's always a trade-off because you might uh, give up some upside or there may be a cost to doing that. So we do a lot of research to decide, you know, is it worthwhile putting in a hedge or not? But generally, we've, we've been able to deliver um, lower drawdowns uh, for this portfolio. What is the outlook for Asian high yield, particularly for the Chinese property developers? Does the Trudeau Asian Income Fund have any exposure to the Chinese real estate market? If so, what strategies are in place to mitigate the risk from these holdings? Hmm. Yeah, we, we have been reducing our Chinese property developer exposure. If I think back three years ago, we had about 10% in property developers. Right now, we've got less than 4% in property developers. So yes, there is some turbulence in that market, and it, it may have an impact on the fund, but the impact is relatively modest. If I think about within that, that sector of property developers, you know, what are we focusing on? One of the things that has caused some of the price declines recently has been what they call investigation risk. So in other words, a company, suddenly there's an announcement that there's an investigation into the operations of this company. What we find is that by focusing less on the private property developers, but more on the state-owned property developers, there's less chance of investigation risk, and those have held up a little bit better um, during the recent turbulence. Regarding broad Asian high yield, um, there we, again, similar to our global fund, we'd been a bit more nervous about high yield. So in our Asian income portfolio, we'd become more defensive, so added more investment grade. Um, I think now with the sell-off that we've seen in high yield, probably that's presenting an opportunity. So I think you might see us starting to add back some of the, the high yield um, exposure there. What advice can you offer to investors who are keen on low volatility income funds and what are some of the cause of concerns pertaining to such a strategy? I, th I think there's a wide range out there. So um, obviously investors will need to do their homework. Um, there's a whole, you know, from funds that are more growth oriented um, and, and have a bit more volatility to ones that focus on sustainability and, and are a bit more stable. Obviously there's a very wide range. So you know, I think that's good for investors because they have a choice, but also they need to make sure that the fund they select is going to deliver um, what they expect it to um, to meet whatever objective they have. Thank you.